Good afternoon, and welcome to St. James Catholic Church. We extend a very special welcome to our guests who have joined us for Mass. We are honored by your presence and participation. Please stand and let us join together in singing our opening hymn. It's number 567, Let All Things Now Living, number 567. of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather this evening to celebrate the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time, we pray for peace. Peace in our nation, peace in our country, peace in our community. And may we be reminded as we will hear in the gospel tonight about the Good Samaritan. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault and my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Glory to God in the
let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that it does in honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. Descendants. 
fruits of his servants shall inherit it, and those who love his name shall inhabit it. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, they stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal took him to an inn and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instructions. Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was a neighbor to the robber victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go 
and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening, everyone. If it's not already been aware, you've been aware of, this week we became painfully aware that there's a lot of hate and anger, not only in the United States, but in the world. I mean, we had the shooting in Louisiana, Minnesota, then we had retaliatory shooting in Dallas, Texas. We had shootings in Orlando. We had a person get killed in Britain because they opposed them leaving the Union. And then we have our presidential candidates who stirs up so much anger that people get into fights outside his rally. You know, I was so depressed when I thought about this. I said, you know, I just can't preach about this. I need to preach on something else. This is just so upsetting. But then God sent me a signal. And it came in the form of a neighbor coming over to my house. And the neighbor, he gave me a hat. It's a golf hat. I like to play golf. It's from Fort Knox, where I play golf. UK on the right, on one side, I thought, this is great, I love this hat. But then I turned it over to the other side, <laughs> U of L. And I said, all right, Lord, I understand. You want me preaching on love your neighbors, I'll love your neighbors. I can love U of L people, except for maybe two hours a year. That's about it. So Father Shane, I love you, man. I know you've been sleep <laughs> sleepless at night, but you know, I do. Seriously though, all this anger doesn't do anything for the people. When you're angry, you just get more angry. You act on it, and then the person that you acted on gets angry, and then it goes on and on and on. Never ends. The only way to end this all is with what Jesus told us. You must put that aside and learn to love your neighbor. In today's gospel, he doesn't really tell us exactly how to do that. But he gives us some examples of things that people did wrong that we can reflect upon and say, do I do that in my life? So let's talk about the law scholar first. This man did not want to ask Jesus a question. He knew the answer beforehand. As it said, he just wanted to justify himself. You see, what law scholars did back then, these were experts in the Torah, okay? They liked to have arguments amongst themselves just to prove who's the best. You know, they would argue on the Torah, and the one that wins would say, you know, I'm smarter. And this man was probably one of the best arguers of the Torah there was. So he figured, you know, if I can beat Jesus, if I can win this argument with Jesus, then I'll truly be the best there is. But Jesus outsmarted him. He asked him the question, and he, had, he knew the answer, and he said he quoted it right from Deuteronomy. And this is a prayer that he knew by heart because it's from the Shema, which they, a devout Jew says every day that prayer. And when he lost that first volley with Jesus, he came back and he said, well, who is my neighbor? And that's when Jesus told him the story of the Good Samaritan. And he talks about the, uh, the Jews, the priests and the Levites passing by this person, not rendering care, and then the Samaritan coming to the aid of this person. This so infuriated him because Jews hate Samaritans. They were Jews at one time. When they were exiled, they married pagans, and they hated them from ever since they did that. That in the end, he would not even recognize this man as being a Samaritan. All he said was the one who treated him with mercy. So what Jesus has shown us there is that things that can get away in our way of loving our neighbor are one, pride thinking that you're better than someone else. And believe me, people, where no one is better than anyone else in this world in God's eyes. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much, what position you have, how many houses, cars, whatever you have. No one is better than anybody else. And the second thing he showed is showing us is that you cannot let prejudice get in your way. You know, you must always remember that whoever that person is that you're encountering, they are the same with God as you are. And you must give them the same respect that you would demand them to give yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now let's talk about the priests and the Levites. The priests and Levites both pass by the Good Samaritan. And the priest is like Father Shane, and the Levite's kind of like myself, a deacon. 
And you know, we cannot pick on these people because in their mind, they were doing the right thing. I mean, their laws have told them from well before they existed that if this man was dead, which they thought he probably was dead, that if they touched him, they would be unclean. And since they were going to Jerusalem, they would not be able to enter the temple. They would have to spend a great deal of time going through a process of being clean, un, uh, from being clean again before they could worship. And it would probably be all the time that they have up there before they had to return back home. Another thing that they, they could have thought is this could have been a trap. Because you see, Jerusalem is up on high and Jericho is down below. It's on a mountainous area. And the only way to go from one to the other is through winding mountain paths. Turns that kind of make it good for ambush. And they could have thought that this man was to sit there dead so that when they went and tried to render him assistance, they would be fall upon by robbers and treated just like he was. It's only the Samaritan that came to his aid. The man that was most hated by everybody in that region that came to the aid of the man in the ditch. So what does this teach us? This teaches us that sometimes, as our Pope is trying to tell us now, we have laws, but we need to look beyond the laws with mercy. We need to look beyond that and try to treat our neighbors a little bit better way than what we do now. These are all very good and holy men. The, law, the, the scholar of the law, the priest of Levite, they were devout worshipers. They did everything that the Torah told them to do, but they had their faults, so, as so do I and so do all of us. So the kind of question that Jesus is asking all of us to look at today is where do you fall in the spectrum from the priest to the Good Samaritan? I myself go back and forth. There's times when I, I'm really like the Good Samaritan, rendering aid to people, being very kind, considerate. But there's at times when I can be like the priest and the Levites. You know, the only thing I can do when I am like that is pray to God for forgiveness, throw myself on his mercy, and try to do better, to recognize that I made my mistake. You know, our own Pope is such a fine example of the Good Samaritan. I mean, we have seen him go to the assistance of people, to the poor. We've seen him go to the sick. We've seen him go to prisoners. And we've also seen him show mercy to people that the church had not shown mercy to before. Such as when Pope Francis was asked by an interviewer about how does the church react to our gay population. And the Pope said, if a person is of that condition and has good will and is seeking God, who are we to judge him? And then lately, just in the record a couple weeks ago, we hear, we saw it written there, that he says, you know, he apologized to not only them, but he apologized to the treatment that our divorcees get treated in the Catholic Church. He says, you know, we need to do better. We need to learn to love our neighbor better. Now, he didn't say he agreed with all the, everybody on all the things, but he said, you know, God's calling me to treat you with better, to treat you all better. And it's not only the gays and the divorcees, but it's everyone. The Muslims that we think are terrorists, but they're not. They're just good people that are worshiping their God. The immigrants, prisoners, everybody. It's up to you to figure out who your, your neighbor is. You know, God said in the end, in the beginning when he said, after he quoted Deuteronomy, he said, do this and you will live. He's telling all of us too, do this and you will live. Learn to love your neighbor and you have eternal life. You have that reward. But more immediately, you have something else. And, I, and when I was reading about uh, preparing for this homily, someone mentioned a sign they once saw, and I thought this was such a perfect sign, so I want to tell you about it. He said he saw this sign and had three words on it, only three words. It had Jesus on top, others, and yourself. And the first letters were all highlighted in a different color. And when you read them from top to bottom, they spelled joy. That's what you get when you learn to love your neighbor as yourself. You get this joy knowing that you're doing God's will. You know, Jesus said, go and do likewise. 
And we may look at all this going on in the world and we'll say, there's no way that I can make a difference with all the hatred and the anger out there. But the Good Samaritan didn't do that when he stumbled upon this man. He did not say, there's no way I can make this man better. There's no way I can help him. I'm not a doctor. But he did what he could. And that's what Jesus is asking us to do. Do what we could to love those that we encounter as we'd love ourselves. There's a hymn in our hymnal that we sing occasionally. But I wanted to go and sing one verse out of it today because it's so fitting to the gospel that we have. And it's also a good way to end the gospel. It goes, we will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess to the baptism of the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Let us now turn to our Heavenly Father and ask Him to hear all of our prayers and petitions. that we may continue to spread the gospel faithfully throughout the world with love, mercy, as a good Samaritan. We pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the governments throughout the world, that they may create and uphold laws to protect the sanctity of all human life, from conception to natural death, and to promote more tranquil and peaceful worlds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer who are sick, dying, or experiencing loss with their nerve families, that they may experience the healing power of Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For all those we serve abroad, especially our brothers and sisters from St. Mark and Haiti, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For the victims of terror, hatred, and violence or abuse, that they may have healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we especially pray for the victims of the families and, the, and the, of the, pe the people in Dallas, Texas, for the victim and the family in Louisiana and Minnesota. We ask God to comfort them. We pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died and all those who will die this day, and especially for Arlene Lampier, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may know the love and mercy of God and enter into the kingdom of heaven, 
We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, hear these petitions and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. Grant them according to your most gracious will. Help us to trust in you always, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Number 694, now we remain. Number 694. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, 
summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 847, Song of the Body of Christ, number 847.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects may grow upon us through Christ our Lord. Just a word of thanks and a warm welcome to any visitors who've joined us. You're always welcome here to celebrate this Holy Mass here at St. James. Uh, a big thanks to Dr. Perry Sangali for playing the music. Dr. Sangali is the president of St. X High School in Louisville. So welcome to E-Town. You're always welcome. And to Mimi, to our lectors, to our servers, uh, our ushers, thank you so much, our door greeters, for all the work you do and the ministry here at St. James. So have a blessed and safe week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Go find the Lord by your life. Let's all join in singing our closing hymn, number 687, Go Make of All Disciples, number 687.